With Silksong nowhere to be seen, and my thirst for platformers is still growing, I set sail to Steam yet again to find my next platformer. Within minutes, I came across a game with an absolutely stunning combat system, Blaze Blue Entropy Effect. This is a $22 2D game that advertises itself as an action roguelike with metroidvania elements. Dead Cells pops into my head. And without another thought, I bought this game. Now the question is, is this game worth the $22? Does it offer anything more than its flashy combat system? Anything unique? Well folks, I bought this game so you don't have to if it turns out to be pee pee poo poo. So without further ado, let's get into it. Blaze Blue Entropy Effect is developed by the Chinese company 91 Act. Interestingly, Blaze Blue is a Japanese owned franchise with its own manga, anime, That's not what I look like. and fighting game series, which were previously developed by Arc System Works. However, it appears that 91 Act was able to collaborate with them to develop this action roguelite. Before playing this game, I recommend you might want to take your controller on a date because the amount of combo input you're going to put is wild, which is not surprising since this game's predecessors are fighting games. Predecessors. Predecessors. This intense interaction with the controller is a testament to the game's complex and engaging combat system. This game is a dream come true for an anime weeb like myself. I mean, the first time I played as Hibiki Kohaku, I was like, no way they have Okita from Gintama. Now this game is packed. It takes some time to absorb all the mechanics it presents, but it is well worth it. The game offers a flashy and impressive combat system, which I must say feels unique for all the characters I have played so far. I have only tried four characters, but they all have their own combos and attacks, creating a learning curve that once mastered, is well worth it. The game is currently in version 1.0 and offers 7 playable characters. I assume this will expand considering the original Blaze Blue fighting games had 36 characters to choose from, which is very exciting to think about. To top it off, you can mix each character's skill through a system called the Legacy System. For instance, if you played your first run with Hibiki Kohaku and then chose to play Noel on your second run after dying, the Legacy System allows you to use some of Hibiki's skills from the first run and add them to your arsenal as Noel. Now, I think this is combat personalization on another level. This may seem overwhelming at first, but once you play a single character for a few runs, their combos and skills will become second nature. Furthermore, this game offers a lot of different skill optimizations throughout each run, and they are known as tactics. These tactics are organized under eight different elements, lightning, fire, ice, blade, toxin, light, umbra, and most importantly, potential. These allow you to personalize each run based on what works for you. And if I'm not mistaken, there are over 200 upgrades. Of course, each run is randomly generated, so you have to make your decision as you progress. Another beautiful aspect of this game's combat system is the player's ability to make each run easier or harder, which is very similar to Hades' Pact of Punishment. Before each run, you can make some aspects of the game more difficult. For example, you can make the bosses unlock new moves, which grant you better drops and points. The points that are earned from each run are used to unlock and level up passives or even unlock more characters. Speaking of passives, there are a lot of them. And depending on how you like to play this game, they will help you a lot. And oh man, you are gonna need it. The depth and complexity of combat system are farther complemented by the game's level design. To my knowledge, Blaze Blue's levels are both procedurally generated and handmade. Most levels are handmade and put in a randomized order similar to Hades, whereas the rest are procedurally generated. One nice touch I like with the randomness this game offers is that you don't get to fight the same bosses on each run. Each run you fight against a different set of bosses as you make your way through the levels. Now despite the game's dynamic boss battles and cool level design, it falls short in delivering the metroidvania experience it promises. It is a disappointing aspect of this game since it advertises itself as a metroidvania. During my 15 hours of gameplay, I have come across very little 
Metroidvania inspired content. To be exact, just one level so far, which makes the game very linear. I think it is a little disingenuous to slap a Metroidvania tag on a game that barely offers any. Aside from that, it is hard not to notice some Dead Cells inspired mechanics, especially when it comes to mobs design. Now, giving me flashbacks of the times that I would die so many times in Dead Cells. Now compared to Dead Cells, when it comes to mobs, this game is much easier and forgiving, especially with the amount of resting rooms or healing you can get even during the early runs. Regardless, it does get tough as you progress, which is not to be taken lightly. While the game's level design offers a unique and engaging experience, the storytelling aspect presents a different challenge. I must say that I don't know how to feel about the story, since the story itself is nothing really original, but still interesting. I really liked how they were told with a mysterious vibe, but I don't like how it was delivered. Throughout each run, you have a chance to get a drop called Phenomena. You take this to an NPC in the base where it uses it to show you about the past and what has led to the current events. I personally wasn't a fan of this, and I think they could have integrated the story into the game much better. Yet again, I don't think most people play an action roguelite for the story, which is why they cut corners when it came to it. Before I share my verdict, I'd like to briefly discuss the game's current state in terms of system optimization. Despite playing on a high-end computer, I still experience significant frame drops from time to time. The game is currently in version 1.0 and I'm confident that the developers will address these issues. However, as of now, don't be surprised if you encounter some FPS issues. Additionally, the hit registration seems a bit questionable at times, but again, that might just be my frustration after some runs. Now, despite the game's rich franchise, I can't shake the feeling that Blaze Blue Entropy Effect is trying to form its own identity. And the game still has a bit of way to go. Now, is this game worth its $22 price tag? I would say yes. This game not only offers one of the best combat experiences I've had in a while, but it has other things from great level design to eye-catching boss fights. Currently, the game is on sale on Steam for $17, so if you're looking for a good action roguelite that can entertain you for more than 20 hours, I would say this game is yours. But just be aware that each run as of right now are pretty short and most of the content comes from unlocking each character and playing them. But hopefully in the near future, they will release DLCs that will unlock more levels for each run and hopefully more Metroidvania content. But anyways, boys and girls, we have come to the end of my video once again and I wish y'all a good day. See y'all in my next video.